Visit Accra and you'll be in no doubt you're a nation deeply enthralled to the world's most popular sport. Ghana has a rich football history and for Africa a relatively long one. The oldest clubs date back over a century, but it wasn't until the 50s that they had the chance to display their skills abroad. In 1950, the country was a colony known as the Gold Coast. Opposition to British rule had seen six leading nationalists detained. And as a way of appeasing the masses, the British decided to organize an overseas football tour. So in August 1951, a party of Gold Coast footballers set out for England. They were, in fact, the second West African team to make the trip. In 1949, a Nigerian team also visited Britain, and a small amount of film of their trip is still in existence. The tours had many similarities. West African footballers didn't wear boots, they played barefoot instead, and both played a series of amateur teams. The Nigerians won their first game against Marine Crosby, but the Gold Coast side had less luck. They lost their first seven matches before recording back-to-back -back victories over an Athenian League 11 and Barnet FC. However, it wasn't all about the results. The Gold Coast Tour turned out to be an important tool for both the emancipation of Africa and for its football. Ben Quofi is a former chairman of the Ghanaian FA. It was the first of its kind. A team going to the United Kingdom was... was was not expected to begin with. It was something good. It brought a lot of life to football at that time. And that was when some players decided to play in boots. Players like Nana Jemfi, CK Jemfi, E.C. Bryant, after the European tour, or after the United Kingdom tour, decided not to go back to the barefooted football again. It helped the growth of football in Ghana. In 1957, the Gold Coast became Ghana, the first British colony in Africa to achieve independence. The country's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, recognized the power of football as a means to achieve social change. As the father of Pan-Africanism, he founded a team called the Real Republicans to act as ambassadors for this movement and what he called the new spirit of the African man. The team's finest performance came in 1960 when they held European champions Real Madrid to a thrill draw. When the Ghana Football Association, the new association, took office in 1957, they brought in a lot of revolutionary moves in order to develop the game. The Ghana Real Republicans, which were made up of about 80-90% of the national team players, formed into a model club for Ghana. That is the team which beat Blackpool 5-0 here. It was virtually a national team, but they were playing in a club, Real Republicans Football Club. That is where the actual development started. At the president's behest, Stanley Matthews, perhaps the best known footballer in the world at the time, played a number of exhibition games for Accra Hearts of Oak as part of the independence celebrations. It was the start of a relationship which would see Stoke City tour Ghana and then host Asante Kotoko a decade later. Jose Kofi is a former Kotoko and national team player. In those days, uh, that was the first time a white man or a white footballer has been a guest player for a team in Ghana. So you could imagine the whole stadium was filled to capacity because we want to see the white man. And at that time, too, Stanley was Stanley Matthews. We all knew him. You know, because we were a British colony, there were some magazines about the British football. We were buying and reading, so we got to know about Stan Matthews long ago with Stoke City and how he was the best number seven player in Britain. So we started came to uplift the image of Ghana football. And Krumah's emphasis on football helped put Ghana on the map as the national team became Africa's dominant side. They were nicknamed the Black Stars after the star in the center of Ghana's flag, which represents African freedom. They reached the Africa Cup of Nations final on four consecutive occasions and won back-to-back -back titles in 1963 and 65. Playing for the national team in those days was an honor. Not now, because we didn't ask for any money. The pride, recognition that oh, this is a black star player. And in those days, could you believe there were no tracksuits? It was only the black stars who have tracksuits. So if you play in the black stars, at least 
you, you, you want to transmit which the national college so when you are going the whole town will get to know that this is the blaster player so it was a big honor and Krumah's final football act was to organize an African boycott of the qualifiers for the 1966 FIFA World Cup, protesting the continent's minuscule allocation. Africa now has five spots. But even before those finals took place, Nkrumah had been overthrown in a coup d'etat. At the 2010 tournament in South Africa, the former president's dream of making Ghana's football a major force reached its fruition. Roared on by an expectant continent, they came within a penalty kick of being the first African side to reach the semi-finals. It was a great achievement, but perhaps no greater than that of their forebears, those first West African pioneers who 60 years past had left home to play in bare feet on the muddy pitches of Britain.